regret playing Super Agent? Yeah, I regret. I really regret. <laughs> First time in my life. And probably the last one. <laughs> Welcome to Super Airjet, a controversial Indonesian low-cost carrier that just popped out of nowhere. Super Airjet is known for its extremely affordable fares, but according to many passengers, flying with them sucks big time. I found it difficult to believe that Super Airjet is even a real airline, because it just sounds like what ChatGPT would say when you ask it to come up with a name for a random airline. But let me tell you, traveling on Super Airjet was one of the strangest and most chaotic experiences I've had in a long time. The sign says one, so he says six. So you have to know for sure. Yeah, it's six. Because we walk three times, one there, one there, one there. Usually, I promote airlines in Asia as being simply superior to those back home. Well, there is no rule without an exception. And in this case, the exception is called Super Airjet. <laughs> what a ridiculous name. All started in Jakarta, where our flight IU758 to Bali was scheduled to depart at 11.45 am. It is my first time in Indonesia and obviously I have to visit Bali. Cheap as I am, I risk my safety once again and chose an airline you probably never heard of, called Super Airjet. They connect Jakarta and Denpasar for as little as $50 and have grown quite exponentially within the last three years. Well, you might have heard of Super Airjet if you saw the recent video of the guy they call the bald and bankrupt of aviation. But before you call me a copycat, just know that I recorded this video back in February 2024. However, absolutely check out his version as well to get a well-rounded picture of this joke of an airline. But why am I so cruel to Super Airjet? Is it because I'm a bad person? Well, on this channel I have already been accused of being an Egyptian spy, a member of an organized crime group, someone who is getting paid to talk badly about aviation and someone who is getting paid to promote aviation at the same time. While I can confirm that all of these accusations are absolutely 100% true and I am a horrible person, I am not trying to pull down an airline's reputation if it is not deserved. But I also want to be honest with you guys, because if there is one thing I am known for, it is integrity. That's why I tell my stories how nature wants it, raw and unprotected. So absolutely take my videos with a grain of salt and if you can't handle them, there are so many other YouTubers who will tell you exactly what you want to hear. I know you might be confused about that, but confusion is the same thing I felt when it came to the question of which terminal we have to go today. What a transition, damn! On its website, Superjet writes that in Jakarta they depart exclusively from Terminal 2, whereas on the online ticket Terminal 1 is stated. But our taxi driver somehow adamantly refuses to take us to T1. My English isn't the best, so he probably understood that I was asking him to donate me his left kidney or some shit, but even when I offered to pay him significantly more, he strictly refused to go there for some reason. We just drove off with our change. Having made it to the right terminal, we step into a notably crowded check-in area. There are separate lines for online check-in, however, it feels like everyone basically just goes to the shortest line, irrespective of its purpose. As the line is moving quite slowly, I make the big brain move of checking my Priority Pass app and discover that there is a departure lounge where you can drop your baggage free of charge. This lounge is called Blue Sky Lounge, a name about as creative as Super Airjet. But to be fair, the stuff there is very nice, there is plenty of food and the possibility to avoid waiting at the baggage drop is priceless. I mean literally there is no price, because as I said for priority pass holders the entrance as well as the check-in service are free of charge. The same also goes for lounge key holders, but I don't know if there are even real people out there who use lounge key, because what the hell is that even? After clearing security, I step outside for some fresh air. <coughs> By the way, for smokers, Indonesia is a f paradise because you are basically allowed to smoke anywhere and almost 3 out of 4 men in Indonesia smoke. Paradise. But I wonder if cigarettes are the only thing those guys at Super Airjet smoke because what follows now is just a gigantic disorganized mess. 
So first we head over to the gate A6 as indicated on our boarding pass. The atmosphere at the gate is lively and gets enhanced by those 99 cent AliExpress speakers. Obviously the gate indicated on the ticket is not correct and we head over to gate A2 as it is shown on the flight information screen. So we sind alles im Gate gesehen, wo da vorne auf dem Bildschirm gestorben ist. Ähm, aber irgendwie hat unser Flug ist trotzdem nicht von da. Es hat zwei Flüge von Superjet, wo beide an der gleichen Zeit von, äh, vom gleichen Gate losgehen. Ähm, und der eine ist auf dem Last Call und der andere ist an Skate. Keine Ahnung, und das Gate ist komplett anders als gerade noch da in, in der anderen Halle drauf steht, auf dem Bildschirm. Ähm, und ein Mitarbeiter hat etwas anderes gesagt als der andere. Arriving at A2, the only people at the gate were confused passengers, but no staff. Also jetzt ist plötzlich nur noch ein Flug angezeigt, am an anderen Gate. Ähm, das schaut jetzt sehr offen, aber es ist niemand da. After our flight disappeared for about 15 minutes from the flight information, it suddenly appeared again with a new departure time, showing boarding. But when we wait in line at the gate, they tell us that the boarding announcement is wrong and that Super Jet flight currently boarding goes somewhere else. Despite the flight information indicating that our flight is currently boarding at this gate. Like, what the hell? Sign says one, so he says six. Yeah, he says not more, but now this is another flight. This is not another flight. They send us to gate A1 and then to A4, where our flight is supposed to leave. But at gate A4, they inform us that this information is also wrong and that our flight will depart back at gate A2 later today. So we head back and after the boarding of the other flight at gate A2 is completed, the only Super Airjet staff present tells us that he is not responsible for our flight and so he just leaves and let us standing there like some leftover fruit in the supermarket. After more than 45 minutes, you really can't make this up, there was still no responsible Super Airjet staff to be found. And finally, another guy who was actually working for Air Asia showed some mercy and decided to help us. And he basically told us to wait at gate A2 until we hear any news. After sitting around for another hour without any information about what is going on, the departure time was quietly changed from 11.45 to 12.45 and then to 1.45, with the status still indicating boarding for over two hours now. I don't want to be a fault finder here, but at this point everyone was just pissed. Into those A4, A3. So you have to know for sure. In A6. Because we we'll walk three times, one there, one there, one there. You regret flying the Superhead? Yeah, I really regret. I really regret. The first time in my life. And probably the last one. <laughs> to be fair, after waiting for almost three hours, Superhead Jet provided some meals. But even that was very chaotic and they did not even announce it. After getting our meal, I almost couldn't believe that boarding had finally commenced. But I was wondering if delays like this are common with Super Air Jet. I just checked the performance of this exact flight on FlightRadar24. For the last 10 days, Super Air Jet flight IU758 was on time only once. And by that I mean that it took off only 45 minutes late. The other 9 flights all show delays of at least an hour. On our flight there was no reason given for the delay. However, this plane has been in Jakarta now for more than 5 hours according to FlightRadar24. So it might have been some technical issues and to be honest I would rather arrive 3 or 4 hours late than ever. But as my grandma always used to say, don't worry, there has never been an airplane stuck in the sky, they always come down. She, she actually said that to me by the way. And with that mindset, I'm leaving this rather unpleasant ground experience behind me to get an unbiased review of Super Air Chats on board product. At the entrance, we are greeted by a crew member who seems attentive, friendly and professional. The same also goes for the flight attendants in the aisle. The plane, on the other hand, doesn't look too good anymore. My seat pocket is sticky and the legroom has probably been designed by this guy. In general, the interior looks quite worn and needs cleaning. All in all, what do you expect from a flight that costs $100 for two people? On a good note, we get a complimentary bottle of water after boarding and the active crew helps the passengers with stowing their luggage. Welcome on board, on the Leidekant Landschaftplatz. We're going to the front of the 
ein bisschen der Anschluss vom Flug. I was unable to get a window seat, but I am not sure if I can blame Super Air Jet's crappy website for that or if it's just me being completely incompetent. We are greeted over the intercom by a pilot with a surprisingly Italian accent. However, there is no reason or even an apo- However, <laughs> However, there is no reason or even apology for the delay. But to be honest, I'm just happy that we are finally on the plane. As I'm sitting in the aisle seat, there is no takeoff footage, but we did not waste any time on the ground and took off in a matter of minutes. I have been ranting on Super Air Jet for 10 minutes straight now, and to every Super Air Jet fanboy watching this, I do apologize. I really try to be fair, but this airline does not make it easy for me. However, you might be wondering how such a crappy airline was able to expand so rapidly. Just founded three years ago, Super Air Jet already operates more than 60 planes and flies to 26 destinations. Well, apart from a pretty unregulated market, the reason for the rapid expansion is mainly Super Air Jet's parent company called Line Air Group. They consist of several large low-cost carriers based in Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand, such as Line Air, Botik Air and Wings Air. I have actually flown on Thai Line Air as well as Botik Air Malaysia, and especially the Botik Air flight in business class was one of the best flights I've ever had. However, the focus of Super Air Jet lies on tech-obsessed Indonesian millennials with a propensity, I don't even know what that means, to travel. A pretty specific target group, if you ask me. They mainly focus on low fares, which sounds good and all, but some may say that Super Air Jet was just founded to have a financially independent company from the rest of Lion Air. By doing that, Super Air Jet was not affected by the repossession of Lion Air planes after Covid and was able to fill the subsequent gaps that were created in the Indonesian market. And at the same time, they are not suffering from Lion Air's reputation. Well played. Because, yeah, overall the Lion Air group doesn't exactly have the best reputation, especially due to its terrifying safety record. By the way, I don't even want to know the condition of the rest of the plane when the visible parts already look like this. If you want to escape from the flight experience, Super Air Jet conveniently offers free in-flight entertainment called Super Entertainment. I fail to connect until I find out that you have to download an application called Tripper in advance. And by the way, if you know the meaning of Tripper in German, you probably don't want this application on your phone or anywhere near you for that matter. I, however, did not download Tripper on my phone before the flight, but I'm also not a tech-obsessed Indonesian millennial with a propensity to travel, so fair enough, I guess. Other than a super nasty safety card and two times the same Tripper FAQ, I don't find an onboard magazine or a menu in my seat pocket. But you can order snacks and drinks on board, and the crew is also selling duty-free items on board. When I head over to the loo, the crew is chatting in the galley, and to be honest, they are quite friendly and also speak English very well. The toilet, on the other hand, is not great. While it's not too dirty, from the smell it is obvious that somebody has smoked in here. I wonder how the smoke alarm did not go off, but maybe it was on the previous flight. However, the smell was still very much present, even though the ashtray was sealed. From what I read later, smoking does not seem to be something out of the ordinary in the liner group, and even some pilots, if they are not currently asleep, apparently sometimes smoke mid-air. There was even a Lion Air pilot arrested for smoking crystal meth before takeoff. Maybe you think that smoking is no biggie for pilots. Well, guess what? It is. I don't want to be the party killer here, but this is much more than just about the health of the pilots. Smoking in the entire plane, including the lavatories and the cockpit, is strictly against safety regulations and has even caused crashes before. Fire ranks among the biggest safety threats in aviation and therefore smoking on board is banned according to Article 419 of the Indonesian Aviation Law as well as the international standard set by the ICAO, which is adopted by many countries, including Indonesia. Ironically enough, there is an entire page on the Line Air website dedicated to the topic of why smoking on board is bad. As we are getting closer to Bali, the gentleman at the window offers to record the landing for me. So, a big thank you to him. After my short time in the country, I'm already amazed at how friendly the Indonesian people are. I'm just another bule who is visiting Bali like thousands of others. But I do feel like people are very welcoming and friendly nevertheless. So, to the people of Indonesia, I know I have been talking badly about this airline. I hope I have not offended anyone. It has absolutely nothing to do with Indonesia itself. I really fell in love with Indonesia and I had the time of my life in Bali. 
I think Indonesia has so much to offer and I really want to see other parts of the country than Bali, but I have no idea where to start to be honest. Also, did you know that unlike the rest of Indonesia, Bali is mainly Hindu? They have their own unique culture, which they hold on to quite strongly. I was super fascinated by that, since unfortunately in many other parts of the world, this kind of heritage is getting lost, I think. So I do respect the Balinese people a lot for that. It's not surprising that I'm looking forward to finally arrive in Bali. The first day will be a bit ruined due to the delay, but at least the landing was bother and at the airport my FK card is in for a treat. I specifically booked a flight during the day to see the spectacular landing in Denpasar. Well, unfortunately that did not work out and instead I'm binge listening to the audiobook called The Pathless Path. A book I highly suggest, by the way, if you're looking for your own path. I could now provide you with an audible affiliate link to this book, which would earn me some money, but to prove you that I truly recommend this book, I won't do that. As I said, the landing in Denpasar was softer than a coffin mattress. Don't ask me how I know that. And within minutes, the doors were opened. As it is the case with many budget airlines around the globe, we park at a remote gate. Usually, many passengers hate that and go ballistic about it. You know, Bali, stick, Bali. Yeah. Um, other than normal human beings, I do like boarding and disembarking on the tarmac a lot, actually, since it gives you a nice view of the plane. And also, when taking the bus to the terminal, we will also see some other. Um, how are those things called again? Airplanes. Our ride is about 10 years old and comes in a for Bali very fitting, say no to drugs livery. Also, I do like the look of Super Airjet much more than its name. The golden slash brown livery somehow makes it look like a premium carrier, but I guess that's just my individual taste. Not far from us is an actual premium carrier in the form of a pregnant Emirates Airbus A340. Pregnant? Also present here in Bali is an airline called CityLink that did not want to take me for a ride recently, and this one called Malaysia Airlines, who took me instead. Moreover, I spot an airline I never heard about called Air Asia, I guess. I'm sure they must be pretty small and irrelevant for the Southeast Asian ultra low cost aviation market. Behind that, I even discovered a favorite carrier of Josh Cahill, as well as a rich cousin of Super Airjet called Batik Air. I know this video was kind of negative, but as you can see, my experience with Super Airjet was not great. That does not necessarily mean that you will have a bad flight too, since everyone's experience differs. And after all, the flight was quite cheap, so I guess I can't expect too much anyway. Apart from the price, another positive aspect for me was the cabin crew, which was friendlier and more professional than I had expected after watching other reviews about Super Airjet. The downsides obviously are the chaotic ground experience, the bad state of the cabin and the delay, which does seem to be a standard rather than an exception. Also, you should ask yourself whether it is worth it for you to fly this airline regarding the safety issues. But as Super Airjet is still quite new, maybe it will improve in the future. But for now, I am not really looking forward to flying with them again. Surprisingly, my business class flight with Batik Air, also a member of the liner group, stands out as remarkably impressive. Click here to watch this trip report. Thanks for watching and see you next week.